and uh, let in a couple stragglers. All right. So, uh, I already talked about this, but forgot to record it. So there we go and read that. And there we go. All right. So here's uh, the first of five different types of systems we're going to talk about here today, a direct to load system. So that's where you have a solar panel connected to a load. In this case, I have an example that shows a fan. Uh, there's no battery. It's just a, a load and a panel. So when the sun is shining on the panel, the fan spins. This would be like a, an attic fan, for example, uh, potentially. Very simple kind of system. You also, in some places, you could have a system where when the sun is shining, a water pump was running to pump water up into a tank or uh, from one place to another, but it only works when the sun is shining. So that's, I think you can agree, a fairly simple sort of system. Um, the next uh, type of system uh, is where you have a panel and a battery and a load. So what we added here is a battery so that things can happen when the sun is not shining. So an example of this that you might be familiar with, by the way, you can turn off your cameras if you want. By the way, uh, a system like this that you might be familiar with is um, uh, path lights, solar path lights. You might have uh, lights on a walkway with a little solar panel and battery. And um, the basic design of that circuit is you have a panel, you have a battery and you have the, uh, you know, the load. And uh, when the sun's shining, the light's not on. And then when the sun is not shining, uh, the light turns on. And uh, so that's uh, a very common type of system. Um, and then the third type, uh, this adds something called a charge controller to the system. And the charge controller coordinates everything. So the main thing it does is it keeps the battery from getting drained too much, which can hurt a battery. And it also, slows down the charge when the battery is full because overcharging a battery can hurt the battery. So this is the kind of system we have with our solar suitcases. I've got a diagram here. You've seen this before from our day two slideshow. Uh, we have a uh, charge controller there. And then there's a separate circuit for each element. So there's a circuit that works for the solar panel, a circuit that works for the battery, and a circuit that works for the load or loads. Um, it's uh, uh, the charge controller keeps track of everything and coordinates everything. So, um, and again, this is the type of system we have in our solar suitcases. Um, uh, we'll be done designing our systems before, if we do make it back to in person learning, uh, you know, say after spring break, um, mm -hmm. it would be awesome. We'd get to, um, uh, you know, uh, put our hands on these systems, but but for now you're going to have to just trust me. This is what this is what our systems are that that we have. Um, uh, any questions so far? All right. The fourth kind of system adds something called an inverter. An inverter is a device that converts direct current. Remember, that's what comes out of batteries. It converts it to uh, regular house current, 120 volt current. So that, that lets you plug in a computer or uh, something else that you have uh, at home that, you know, runs that plugs into the wall. So um, inverters come with what's called a, a watt rating. And, um, uh, you know, if you wanted to power a portable computer, you might get by with a 100 watt inverter. And if you wanted to run a refrigerator, you'd have to have a much more expensive, big and powerful one. So there's a lot of different kinds of inverters. I I went on a, I did a little Google search and I found a, a company that sells all these different kinds of inverters. I know this might be a little small on your screen, but here's a little one that's like mobile power from any cigarette lighter outlet. This is the kind of one we would add to our, uh, our custom systems. Uh, it's perfect for cell phones, tablets, laptops. Um, and then they have bigger ones. If you're having one for an RV or a boat or something that's going to run a microwave or you know, other appliances. And then uh, you might have a much bigger one for emergency power if you had a bunch of batteries at your home that you were saving in case of emergencies. And then, the, yeah, the, down on the bottom row, they've got one you'd have like on a work truck for running, uh, you know, electric tools. Or, uh, and then there's certain specialized ones that are required for very sensitive electronics. 
and then uh, yeah anyway we're, we're going to be mostly focused on this top left one for mobile professionals uh you know that goes into a cigarette lighter outlet and then the final kind of system just i just wanted to mention it is uh called a grid intertie system and that's a system that uh uh that plugs into the grid so this is typically what you'd have uh for a home for example i have uh I have solar panels on the roof of my house and I, but I don't have any batteries hooked up to that system. So my solar panels, when I make more power than I need, they send the power out and to, to, to the grid and uh, my meter runs backwards and um, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, you can have, you can add batteries to a system like this. It just makes the system more expensive. And, um, uh, but it's called a grid intertie system. Classically, because I don't have batteries, if the grid goes out, then my power doesn't have electricity, even though my roof is still making it. It's the roof is like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it, but there's nowhere for it to go. So it doesn't help me, um, which is a shame, but the system costs a lot less than if I put batteries on it, you know? So there you go. Um, all right, so today's assignment, uh, uh, here we go. Our solar suitcases are the type that have the panel, a charge controller, battery, and one or more loads, you know, the third type of system from today. Um, and that's also the type of system I'm going to ask you to um, design. Uh, and so the first step in designing a system is to identify the loads you might want to power in case of an emergency um, or other situation where you're not able to get power from the grid. So today's assignment is a Google Sheet, which you're, you're going to use to identify potential loads for your system. Um, I'm going to just open it up um, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, again, I know it's small on your screen, but it's called Solar Day 4, Exploring Loads. And then I've got space here for you to write down five, five different uh, devices. And uh, the instructions are down below. So I'd like you to read the instructions before you start writing writing things in here, but you're gonna have a device and then a number of watts that it uses and another device and a number of watts and so on. Uh, and I tell you how to do that down here. Uh, I want you to, uh, uh, I'm just gonna tell you up front. you don't have to get too worried about like how big or powerful the devices are today, but don't make, uh, don't make everything Huge, uh, huge meaning like microwave oven, hair dryer. Uh, those things use a lot of electricity. Uh, I need you to have at least a couple things that are not that are not big because we're not going to pretend to make our systems work with really, really powerful things like hair dryers and uh, and refrigerators and microwaves. Uh, they use you know thousands of watts, and we're going to keep our system uh, costing less than five hundred dollars and most likely using less than two hundred and fifty watts. But um, but for today, just I want you to uh, read the instructions, do what it says, and then you'll turn in that Google sheet. This will involve you doing, you know, some some Google searches uh, for things. Um, uh, that's it. Any questions? We're just going to fill out that that Google sheet with four or more devices. I, I gave you room for five, but I'm just requiring that you do four. And then after you put the devices in, like the device could be your cell phone and a Bluetooth music player and a light, uh, you know, then I need you to look, use Google to look up how much power each, each device uses. Um, and you're thinking about emergency preparedness. Um, okay, so again, if you wanna turn off your cameras, you can. Thanks for showing up. Um, uh, it's not a very hard a task today. Just uh, fill out that sheet, turn it in, and uh, when you're done, uh, you you can leave. Thanks. I'm gonna stop the.